Many of us get information from social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Just as you evaluate information from other sources, you'll want to check the credibility of social media postings. Most importantly, be sure to do this before hitting the share button. Fortunately, evaluation strategies, often referred to as the four moves or SIFT, can be applied to social media. Let's look at a YouTube example. This is a screenshot from a YouTube video from Dr. Mike, a popular YouTuber who answers a variety of health and medical questions. Someone asked Dr. Mike if eating burned food was bad for you. And you can see with the danger sign, Dr. Mike answered yes to this question, that burned food can produce carcinogens that could be linked to cancer. The first move is to stop. Ask yourself, do I know this source? Do I trust it? Taking a moment to stop and think can help prevent you from sharing something on social media that you wish you hadn't. Let's get into Dr. Mike's YouTube channel. Sure, I could go into about and read what Dr. Mike says about himself. But to really check the trustworthiness of Dr. Mike, I need to read what other people have said about him. This is the second move, to investigate the source by looking at sites other than the source itself. So I will do a simple Google search with Dr. Mike. Not unexpectedly, I'm pulling up a lot of his social media, including Instagram, his YouTube channel, the Twitter account, as well as Facebook. But I also have a Wikipedia entry about him. If there's anything controversial about a person or group, Wikipedia will often include that information as a heading under contents. I don't see that here. Though under COVID-19, I read that in 2020, Dr. Mike went to a big beach party without wearing a mask. I also learned that he won some awards for outstanding web content, so that's a good sign. Let's look at this Find a Doctor website. This webpage is being hosted by the Atlantic Health System, one of the largest nonprofit healthcare networks in New Jersey. In this bio, we learn more about where he went to medical school, where he did his residency, and his hospital affiliations. At this point, I can conclude that he's a doctor, and there aren't any red flags to be particularly concerned about him as a source. The third move is to find other reputable sources that verify Dr. Mike's claim that burnt food can be dangerous. Checking the credibility of the source isn't the same as verifying the source's claim. I'm going to go back to Google, and this time I'm going to search for burnt food and cancer. The first site is from a cancer research organization in the UK. It was last reviewed in October 2021. It also has been marked as a trusted source. This is a UK mark you might come across a home code that indicates reliable health information. This chart shows that this organization concludes that burnt food causing cancer is a myth. It talks about acrylamide, a natural chemical found in starchy food, and concludes that acrylamide is unlikely to increase the risk of cancer. They are basing this on good quality studies. Unfortunately, they don't link to the studies and there's no list of consulted resources. This is where the library becomes important. You can search on this topic in scientific and medical databases accessible from the library to track down the original studies. I'm going to check another website. Dana-Farber Cancer Institute is a well-known respected cancer research institute in Boston. They come to a similar conclusion. Studies suggest that these likely carcinogens are actually unlikely to cause the most common types of cancer. This webpage was last updated in 2019. If I wanted to find more recent research, I could do my own search in the library scientific and medical databases. The third site is being hosted by a university. A PhD chemist wrote this article. He mentions that the link between consuming acrylamide in food and developing cancer is unclear. The author links to original research studies, such as this one, a 2015 review article published in the International Journal of Cancer. This is the fourth move, tracking down the original source. Sometimes websites will cite evidence, but misrepresent its meaning. So it's always beneficial to look at the original source. If there isn't a direct link to the original study, you can always check the library databases to see if we have access to it. This is a webpage from the Harvard School of Public Health. It's reviewing a study on acrylamide and ovarian cancer. While they cite the article, there isn't a link to the full text. When you come across something like this, use OneSearch from the library's homepage to see if we have it. 
OneSearch searches almost all of our databases at once. I'm going to cut and paste the title of the article and then search for it in OneSearch. Here it is. I'm going to click on Fully Available Online and now I have access to the entire article. When you read the original research, you're not relying on someone else's interpretation of the study. So will eating a burnt piece of toast give you cancer? Based on the evidence at this moment in time, I'd say no.